Whoop, whoop. Hola. Tania Lopez here, and I am the artist behind Art E Zone. If you are new here, welcome. In this channel, I typically share my art journey, and not just that, but tips for the beginner entrepreneur. Not, well, the beginner artist entrepreneur. So basically, you may not be a new artist, but you may be embarking on actually trying to take this home business seriously and trying to find ways of selling your artwork. That's what we're here for. And really, I am sharing as I go, as I learn, as I make changes, as I evolve, and I hope you join me. In today's video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about ways that you can make your home business, your art business run just a little bit smoother. And I had to learn a lot of these things the hard way, um, a lot of trial and error. And you may actually end up going through a lot of trial and error because what works for me may not work for you. Now, I do want to give a disclaimer. If you are the type of artist that paint strictly on emotions or I, I don't know how to explain it. Um, if you're the type of artist that just paint as you go or create as you go, or maybe you're more of, of an artist that work on commission, then a lot of these things may not work for you. But if you are the type of artist that are trying to set yourself up for a more routine tasks or rather create more uh, different venues for you to go ahead and make some money off your artwork, then you might learn a thing or two. And if it's nothing new, maybe think of things a little bit differently. But anyways, let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so my first tip, and I am not going to stress this enough. I think you probably, if you're not new, you hear me talk about this in almost every single video and that is to create some passive income for yourself i think as an artist this is very important um, i find it important because you want to make sure that your work is sustainable you want to make sure that you create a, a cushion for yourself for the future right when you work in a regular nine to five job you maybe have a retirement plan or whatever it may be. This is essentially what I want to make sure that you do not forget or that you do not put in the back burner. You want to make sure that you set yourself up, not just today, but tomorrow for success. So creating some passive income to me is very important for you. Now, this may come in many different ways. If you are a visual artist like myself that you like to um, share your work in print on demand companies or maybe you may um, create digital art prints or downloadable products, printable products and those kind of things you can go ahead and set yourself up so, to create some passive income. But maybe you are more of a um, painter who focuses on selling only the original work or maybe you may be a crafter um someone like my friend Jeanette who's a wood burning artist which by the way we'll be doing another video with her of how she plans out her year as a wood burning artist so keep an eye out for that but maybe if you're like her you may want to create um some pre-recorded workshops to create some kind of passive income um, she does instructions in person, so even though that's not considered technically passive income, since she's actively working on it, she is doing different sources. So, you know, there's just many different ways and venues for us to create more out of the artwork. But my main goal is to create work that will continue to work for me um, in the future. So do the hard work once and then let it do its thing. That's how I do, and guys, honestly, that's just how I do everything in life. Work hard, and then make sure that whatever you do, you set yourself up for success. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is for you to create an either series or create projects that have multiple uses or multiple purposes. I briefly touched on this on my previous video, which was about planning out your year. So I shared that I made a graph like this, very simple, and I work by either topics or themes. The example that I gave was my greeting cards. So 
I and decided that I wanted to create some more passive income. The way for me to do the do this is to create some greeting cards that are downloadable. So I do the work once and then I take it from there, do the work and hopefully it should be able to work for me, right? Once I go ahead and list the item, people can go ahead and purchase the downloadable. They can download it, they can print it. My job is done, which was just the listing. So I create a, a graph or a chart like this. So for example, I gave, uh, let's say, not necessarily the topic, but the project for me for this would be greeting cards. I may do birthday, graduation, Father's Day, whatever mother's day and so i will create all of the pictures for the greeting cards and take it that way or i might go by let's say season i might want to do summertime so what do i want to do for summertime i may want to create some barbecue invite cards that i can do or just a hello summer sticker or little things like that that would fit under one topic or one project, one series that I can work on it simultaneously. Why? Because I feel that I need to work smarter and utilize a little bit of time. I work full time. For me, my home business is my part time and therefore the time that I do have to work on it, I have to make sure that I work very, very, very smart. And so um, one of the examples that I gave was one artwork multiple purposes i have the senorita over here the graduate um don't mind the card i'm gonna say this this is just my test print so it's not even but i can go ahead and make this into a sticker if i remove that or maybe a tote or a t-shirt if i add the congratulations i can put it in the greeting card whatever it may be how many things can I make up of one artwork? So that's one way that you can create one artwork with multiple purposes or one theme where I can create multiple artworks that fit that theme and kind of put them together. Um, <clears throat> and that works too when it comes to you sharing it to your social media or sharing it to your website. You can link all of them together so that someone may come in to find a greeting card and they may see something else. So it's just the way that I like to work, working in projects, making sure that I optimize that piece of work as much as possible. Number so three, to make your life simpler, I kind of sort of touched, touched it a little bit with number two, but that is for you to work in bulk. So the reason why I created the chart is because I wanted to make sure that I can make more pieces or I figured that I would create more pieces that I can use if I work in a series. So um, let's say I want to create a series on um, salsa instruments, right? And with this, I may create one piece with congas. I may create another piece with maracas. I may create another one with a... a I don't know, a timbre, whatever it may be, I can create multiple pieces of work with one theme and I'm working in bulk. But then not only that, when it's time for me to um, take it to the next level or put it on the next step, I'm working in bulk there as well. I used this example in my last video and I'm gonna mention it again, maybe explain it a little bit more efficiently. I said that I wanted to create greeting cards and I wanted to create multiple greeting cards. So my goal was to have at least 10 greeting cards um, for 10 different occasions. And so I'm gonna start working on these this project. So the main project is greeting cards. I said, I'm gonna have a birthday card. So again, if you don't know this about me, most of my artwork is Puerto Rican related, so you will see that a lot. <laughs> uh, but I went ahead and created my drawing that I am thinking is gonna go on my birthday greeting card. I'm not worried about words, I'm not worried about layout, I'm just 
creating the artwork, okay? At the same time, or right after I finish that one, I'm going to create my graduation card. And I went ahead and drew the next piece. So there goes my little girl, my 2022 graduate. And then when I did this one, I said, you know what? I think I want one with just... Um, so my whole phone just crashed and deleted a lot of it. So I think this is where I left off looking at the video, but um, I wanted to go ahead. Where was that? Oh, I was telling you about my little girl. And once I did that, I decided that I wanted to do a cap. So I went ahead and drew the cap. <clears throat> and then I went ahead and started on my Father's Day tie. And so these are just things that I'm drawing out with my greeting cards and all of the occasions in mind. And I believe I'm talking about um, creating in or working in bulks rather. So once I go ahead and draw all of the things that I want to do for my greeting cards, I'm going to go ahead and take pictures of all of my artwork at one time. Once I, I go ahead and take pictures of all of my artwork, I'm going to crop them, remove the background, edit them, do all of those things at one time. <clears throat> Once I do that, then I can go ahead and work on my template for my greeting cards. I decided I wanted to add a small little logo on the back, so I created that template that will have the... Um, just a small little logo on the back. And so all I gotta do now on the other side is to plug in my other um, images. So, which by the way, when I'm editing edit, editing my artwork, I'm also adding whatever um, fonts or words or quotes that I wanna be able to have on those. So I'm working on, on all of those things in steps, right? Once I create all of my greeting cards, then I can go ahead and test print them then I may go back and edit them again, and then I can go ahead and create the PDF files, have them up so that I can start listing them. When it's time to list, I can go ahead and list all at one time. When I do the listing all at one time, I already have my descriptions ready to go, written out, my hashtags, descriptions, all that stuff. I can just go ahead, copy and paste, and maybe make uh, minimal changes to each listing that may be appropriate for that. And so, as you can see, I am working in bulks and it just makes things easier for me and I can work more efficiently and also it just works and helps on my time management. Um, another tip that I just touched on but I want to go a little bit further into is the same way that you are ensuring that each artwork has multiple pieces, ensuring that you work in bulks, you also wanna make sure that all of your social medias are interlinked so that they kind of work together. So for example, I have my website. When I create a listing on my website, it automatically puts it to my Facebook shop. It automatically puts it to my Instagram shop. And all I have to do is go into Facebook and Instagram and maybe make sure that they are they they were able to transfer correctly, but I'm not creating a new listing. And so now when it comes to uh, <clears throat> Etsy, which I also do with my regular website, I want to make sure that I share those to my Pinterest so that I'm bringing traffic through Pinterest as well. I do this um, with my Redbubble and my Society6 as well. Whenever I create a listing on Redbubble or Society6, I also add it to Pinterest. I share it on Facebook. I share it on Instagram. And I have everything kind of linked. Um, on my Instagram uh, page, I do have a links in bio. So like that, when they go into that link, they can see all of the shops that I have available. And so everything, you wanna make sure that it's working together. And every so often, you wanna make sure you get in the habit of going back and making sure that there are no, um, <clears throat> no gaps or no breaks in that chain, right? Because you're basically essentially creating a chain. You share it on one and everything should be kind of like sharing automatically. I do this with Twitter as well, but I don't really care for Twitter. I haven't really quite gotten the gist of it, but regardless, it's linked, it's there, it's making a post. Um, and so I just wanna make sure that I optimize that word, right? That word, you wanna 
optimize every single thing that you do. And so that's another tip, tip. number five is for you guys to set goals and a timeline that you will be accomplishing these goals. So I went a little bit over this on my previous video of how I plan out for my year, but essentially that's what I wanna do with my project. So if I said, or I said rather, I wanted to complete all of my digital downloads or my printable items, excuse me, I wanna have them ready and listed by the end of March. Um, and so when I did this, I broke it down even further into what kind of downloadable products I wanted to have. So I said, okay, I want to have 20 downloadable art prints. I went ahead and worked on those. I took pictures of all of my artwork. I cleaned them up. I edited them. And then I um, <clears throat> created the mock-ups. Once I created all of the mockups, I was able to then sit down and create the listings for all of these things. All of my 20 um, art prints have already been listed on Etsy. And then I went on to the next project, which was um, the cross stitching charts. Now this I'm not too familiar with. I did it on a request from an IG artist. And so I said I was gonna create at least five. And so I did, I went ahead and created these. I'm still learning um, on how to create those cross stitch um, charts, but I wanted five. And so I did those, I listed them, those are good to go. And the next thing was my greeting cards, which so far I think I have, I want 10. I think I have one, two, four. I think I already have those done. Um, so I, I need at least six more. And so um, I'm just working on those and I want to make sure that I have all of these things done at least by the end of March. So I think I'm, I'm doing really, really good on my timeline. The reason I do this is because I know myself and I know that if I don't put a time um, that I want to accomplish this, then I am going to be like, oh, well, I have time. And the next thing I know, I blink and it's that time already and I missed it right and so i don't want to do that i want to make sure that i create all of my passive income in the beginning of the year so for the rest of the year it could just work for me and i don't have to do anything later on but maybe promote it from time to time or um <clears throat> um i don't know refresh them do those kind of things and so it will be done um one of the things that i do do when it comes to my passive income is that I create a listing also on Pinterest. So that goes hand in hand. And that's also another way that you can make sure that everything kind of works together. All right, tip number six, I think we're at number six, is to outsource. Outsource, do not be scared of outsourcing. I know when I first started back in 2018, I think, somewhere around there. I wanted to create everything because I felt that if I did everything, then I was not spending money that I didn't have. Um, and obviously, if you're just starting out, you may not have the money that it requires. But if you do get to a point where you can outsource it or think of it more as an investment, then I suggest you do so, especially with those tasks that one may not be... Um, maybe too time consuming for you, or maybe you may not have the skill just yet to get it done in a timely fashion, fashion, in a timely manner. I don't know. I'm all tongue tied, um, efficiently, right? So for example, me and Adobe, I suck at it. And so I know, I know I gotta, I gotta get better at it. I just, for some reason, my mental capacity just does not want to comprehend it and listen if there's someone out here that lives near me i'm in raleigh north carolina if you, adobe or photoshop if those are your things and you're willing to teach you know holla at me because i just don't get it and i feel like i need someone to actually do things with me because i have watched countless videos on youtube on skillshare everywhere and i just don't get it but anyways if you can outsource certain tasks by all means do so 
I don't do my seamless patterns. I draw it out, I send it off, I pay my money, I'm gonna make that money back, okay? So don't think of it as you're wasting money, you're investing. I pay a small amount of money, and small in comparison to what you're gonna be making, right? To go ahead and create the seamless pattern, it saved me some headache, it saved me some time, which is the most valuable thing I have, and I'm able to get this product in that's professional and it's clean and it's crisp and boom, done. Um, Mock-ups, I'm not very good at that because it requires things like Photoshop. I do do small mock-ups for some artworks with apps on my phone, but if I wanted things that are more in-depth, then that's where I would utilize or outsource it so somebody else can just have that headache and do it for me. And so, I would suggest and recommend for you to outsource as much as possible. All right, and bonus tip, because I was not gonna talk about it, but I think I should. And this is the way that I do everything in life, not just art, but you know how we don't like a task and we tend to procrastinate? I know I do. I don't like folding clothes, for example. That's like, the shore that I hate the most, I will procrastinate. But when it comes to things like this, guys, if it's a task that you like to do least, go ahead and get it done. Get it done and out the way. Example, taxes. I don't mean filing taxes. I mean like making sure that your online shop has all of the taxes per state because I did not know that that was a thing. I thought that it would automatically calculate it and I had to actually go in there and do the research and plug it in and for whatever reason, I just had to do it. And so I don't like to do that kind of stuff, but just go ahead and get it done. Every so often, for example, beginning of the year, go ahead and go through all your websites, make sure everything's running smoothly, do all of your admin, do all of the taxes, do all of the shipping, make sure that no, maybe the prices went up, you know? So update everything, all of these medial bleh, tasks, just get it done. Same thing should happen with your day. If the thing that you like to do least is check your emails, then check your emails early in the morning, get it done and out the way. It would just make things run by smoother. Um, and so that's my bonus tip, honestly. That's that's it. That's that's all I got. I think you guys got one more than I expected because I added another one in there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it. I'm getting tired of talking. I'm not going to lie. But I'll see you guys next time. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And make sure you subscribe so you can keep a lookout for the next one. Um, the next video. The next video should be with Jeanette. I think I mentioned that already. And if not, it's somewhere in there. Either way, I'll make sure that all of these videos, that I'm going to optimize each one of these videos and have a card for you with the next one for you to watch if it's already ready. All right? Otherwise, look in the description. Maybe I added something in there. Who knows? Bye.